Welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show where I'm working with some pallet wood again but this time it's a little bit different. Oh, I can barely lift this one. Now, it might look like the ordinary pallet that you've seen thousands and thousands of but this is nearly an inch thick ball. Obviously, or generally we found in the engineering side on industrial estates where they have heavy machinery, they're taking extra heavy weights. This is really, really good solid wood, much thicker, probably nearly two or three times as thick as the normal cheap pallet wood you get. You can search them out, as I say, look for anywhere industrial estates that are shipping in heavier items, you know, of goods from foreign countries. They're moving weight around, probably steel, weight, engines, that type of thing. Anyway, what I fully intend making with this, because it's better quality wood, is a very nice, I'm going to call it a drinks table. Basically a garden table you can use outside in the garden because the few times I get to sit down in the British weather and relax and chill in the sunshine, I have to keep stretching down from the chair to pick the drink up. So why don't I just make my own table out of pallet wood for free? First job, I'm going to split it, break it all down, but I'm not going to rip all these nails out because the wood's so strong they use more nails bigger nails, stronger nails. It can be tough work. It's nice wood, break it down first and then we'll get to work on it. Now listen, there's not going to be any specific divine measurements when you do this. You could take all these nails out here, make yourself some work, but I don't need a drinks table four feet long. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the saw using a long bladed reciprocal saw along the edge of the band here, right where it butts up against the support. That saves me cutting all those nails, splitting all these nails out. I get a nice straight cut, same the other end, and I'll get the lever underneath here. I can lever it up and hopefully get the minimal damage to the wood because this is then ready for sanding down. Okay, I've sawn the end bits off, don't need those. But you'll see here that the, I've loosened them already, just to make life easier. I'm using standard wrecking bar, which has got that little curve and a flat edge at the top so you can get right under the wood. But make, don't make the mistake of levering out too early. Make sure when you hammer it down, it drives right under the board and gradually lifts the ball. Doesn't matter if you damage this bit, you don't want to damage the top too much. You'll notice here they're alternate balls. On the outside, I've got 14 centimetres, 14, 14, but the two internal ones are only 10s. So I'll probably, see that's far, that's going to be wide enough. I'm going to use one, two, three here for making my drinks table. The rest can go into the log burner, and I might use that board and use a strut at the bottom. So let's take these off. drive it underneath and then just lift it one way or the other that's, that's off and it's pulled those nails out clean there and the ball is, is a really nice hard piece of wood let's put that off to a side and make sure you put it nail side down put the nails down you're going to be walking around and then stand on it lever from that, that bottom end because the, this piece is going to be my nice flat surface I'm going to sand down. Well, I've now broken these down into the small blocks which I'm going to make into legs. I've got to sand these down, just take an edge off them, make them a little bit smoother, a little bit more user friendly should we say. All the nails have been removed, the nails are thrown in the rubbish, do not get them in your feet. It's not good for tyres if you put your car in the garage at all which I don't because there's so many other jobs I have to do in here. Uh, slats, I've got loads of different slats. I'm going to cut these to the size I want and then I'm going to sand them down and I'll show you two different ways of sanding. Okay, what I've done now, to make the table top, I've selected three slats which will give me good enough width for a uh, drinks table. 
I was butted the all the ends up all together. Of course, they're pallets, so they're, you know they're not necessarily sawn straight. I've then got C clamps on them, so they're clamped, and I'm going to use a set square to give me a nice straight edge, and take the end off nice and neat both sides. You can make it, you know, whatever length you want. There we go. Just gives me a, a nice mark there, and I'll probably. I can't imagine how many drinks I can get on this in the summer. It needs to be big. It can be anything you want. I would have thought 30 inches would be enough, to be honest. That's two feet six in English. 30 inches I'm going to make that. Yeah, that should be enough. I'm going to saw this end off first, and then measure up, cut the other end off. I've got my pieces of wood all nicely squared off at the end there. Now I'm going to try and sand them down, get a decent finish on this wood, because it's nice hard wood, this palette. You can use a regular sander. I'm going to call this a vibrating sander. It vibrates all over the place, and you can either buy different uh, grades of sandpaper, or in my case, as I had furniture shops, a couple of furniture shops that I owned for 38 years, I used to go to the factories where they made the furniture for me and they would give me all their throwaway belt sanders. Huge, huge big belt sanders. This is probably 15 years old, 20 years old. Keep it right, it still works, it's very coarse. Or you can use a much larger sander that has the dust extractor on it. And obviously when you're sanding, put the usual health and safety glasses on. I can't because I wear glasses, so I cannot put glasses over the top. They steam up, as many of you might know who wear glasses. Definitely put a dust mask on or get one with a collecting bag. And that has a revolving belt, like a belt sand, a mini belt sand, belt sander. Much more powerful. Or well, indeed, if you don't have power tools, not everybody has power tools, you can rub it down by hand sanding, but rather than do it with your fingers, you'll get a much more even, well, an even finish to it rather than depressions which you get with your finger. If you use a block of wood on there, and use that to push on flat. It flattens it, it levels it. A very, very effective old way of doing it, albeit hard work with elbow grease. I think I'll stick with the uh, corded equipment. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, I'm sure it's a bit difficult to recognise that. It's a piece of old pallet wood. Could have been around the world, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, Africa, wherever. It's back to nice piece of solid wood. So there, that's just going to be a basic of the tabletop. I've sanded the edges, but I didn't use the belt sander for that. I just used a block and a piece of sandpaper just to get those nice and smooth so they butt up together like that. They've all been tidied up, just like that. So they're going to go like that. But I'm just going to run a chamfered edge, a curved angled edge across here. I'm not going to use the sounder. It's going to be on the outside edges. There's just two of them. And it shows all the grain up as well. I'm going to do that with them. I can find it. A regular surf. I don't know what you call these around the world. We call them a surf form tool. Stand up and do this. Put it like that, just going to keep it over an angle and just plane off effectively. I guess you could use a plane if you wanted to. Just going to slightly round the outside edges of either side of the drinks table. It makes it a little bit less likely to splinter. There. Put all the grain out in that wood there. Now it's lovely and smooth, no splinters. Now I'm going to work on the legs and what we call in the trade the stretchers. Okay, if you can imagine, it's a bit long really, that's a flat of our drinks table. I'm going to have legs in each corner as it were. They could get a bit wobbly if it gets moved around. So in the furniture trade they fit what we call stretchers. 
which are two cross spars, or it could be single spars that go all the way around the edge. And what I'm going to do is more pallet wood, a thinner piece this time. This is only a piece of four inches, so that's dead handy. I'll cut that at two inches straight down the middle. Uh, probably use a circular saw with that, might be a bit straighter. Once that's cut down, I've got two nice sort of four foot lengths. I can mess around, I can even get a bit artistic with it if I want to, and put the stretches in so that I know those legs won't collapse. And more important, I won't spill my drinks. I split that four feet by two inch wide piece of wood down the middle. As you can see, I've sawn it right down the middle and I've cut it, I've put this on the, on the top side just to give me this actual size I want to put the stretcher legs on the bottom. So they're going to go around the bottom, so this is actually sort of upside down, if that makes sense. But it's just my way of getting a good measurement, it's all going to fit. So what am I going to use for legs? You must ask yourself, they would make the legs with that. Let's turn it back upside down. I'm going to use for legs, yes, the blocks. They're going to go in each corner. Probably three high, and I'm going to put a spacer in one. I do it that way, so that I can either go crossways. If I went crossways with it, I would come to the outside edge and cut an angle on it, okay, and then fire a screw in, and then simply put the next block in over the top of it. But what I'm going to do is build the leg up like this, as you see there. I think three is enough for me to reach, two will probably be, and then put my stretches on the outside like this to support them. So really pretty basic. The next job, fix these three together. Okay, to join these blocks together, I'm gonna to use, wait for this, reconstituted nails that I've taken out, but I've cut the heads off them. I'm gonna use a small drill, just to make a bit of a hole dead in the center. Just like that. And, a little dab of wood adhesive in there. That might be a bit too much really for a, a luxury uh, bit like this. Plus I can't now see the hole. There it is. And I've got the head part going into the hole. Keep it nice and straight. Hammer that down about halfway. And simply line up your other one. And away you go. Doesn't matter if it's crooked. In fact, sometimes it's better to make it rustic. And do you know what I can do with this, which I've done before? Just do an offset twist. I think that makes it a little bit neater. What you've got to remember is to keep the other twist going back this way if you're going to put that spar at the bottom. Wow, well, that's a hard piece of wood for a bit of pallet. There we go. Little dab of glue around there. Barely any at all, just holds it in place, especially outside. So the head's cut off there. In we go in the hole. Get it going down. And then you can see the other one drops over, but do remember to keep it square at the bottom if that's going to be the outside. That this square is level with that square. And you've got a bit of pattern in between with the middle one. There we go, a perfectly usable leg. A rustic look about it. I've, I've done it offset in the middle. You can always adjust it a little bit if you want before it sets. I'm gonna do the other three legs, let this all set up overnight, come out in the morning, we'll take another look and do those stretches on the bottom. And then we're getting very nearly towards staining. Right, back the next morning. All my legs, my blocks are all nice and solid, all the glue set, and now I'm going to put them onto my tabletop. So I'm going to turn this upside down, just check the square's all okay, everything's level there, it's all screwed up. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill the four holes through here, and then I'm going to use coach screws to go through, because they've got a nice big thick fat thread, and they're going to bite into that wood pretty well little dab of glue on there and I'll countersink that bolt as well and then I'm going to fill the countersink hole out because don't forget this is going to be outside so I don't want any moisture, any water will, will make that loose and rot it out I'm going to countersink the hole, fill it with some wood filler and then we can start the final part which really is the best bit, staining it
Okay, I put the coach screws in, but what I'm going to do, I'm not going to recess, I'm going to leave them just sticking up a little bit because I don't think I'm going to catch any drinks glasses on there and they're just, you know, two or three mil higher than the wood. But that way, it stops the rain getting in any recess because I feel if I put wood filler in there, the sun and then the cold is going to crack the wood filler and I'm still going to get a leak. So I've actually readapted it. I'm just going to leave those coach screws there just a tiny bit proud. They're basically, they're down as high as they want to go. And all I need to do now is put on my struts, supports that go at both ends and along the side. And of course, I've pre-measured them so I know they're exactly the same length as the top. And I can just screw one in and then ease the leg in or out and that makes a perfect support. And there's no way I think, do you know what? I'm going to take a gamble and say I can stand on this. Look really stupid if I can't. Okay, I'm going to whiz these in with regular decking screws. Why decking screws? Because I've got them in my toolbox, but more important, they have a nice wide gap between each of the threads, so they, they bite into softer wood, I feel, and they'll, uh, if they're good enough for decking, they're good enough for my supports. I'm going to prefix them here. It makes life a little bit easier. And this little cordless is going to fire them in with no trouble at all. Now for putting these stretches on, I'm not going to put them flush with the ground, I'm going to leave them a few millimetres up so that they don't suck in water via osmosis. This will, you can't help that, but if this does start to rot out I can still saw it off. I like to leave that little gap there, just a few millimetres each side stops the water going up there. This way I've got the same length at the bottom as I have at the top. There you go, that's the last of the stretches on the bottom. Now let's see if I can keep my word and stand on it. Here we go, the moment of truth. Have faith in your own workmanship. There you go, nothing wrong with that. Ten and a half stone of pure fighting male. <gasps> now comes the best bit, and that's staining it. You can paint it, you can stain it, you can varnish it, you can treat it with a wood dye. I'm just using regular, it just says furniture stain on it, but I'm not going to go dark, I'm going to keep it fairly light, and then, if, well what happens is, if you put a dark stain on it and you don't like it, you can't get it off, you've got to sand it all down. If you use a light colour to start with, you can at least grade it down by going over the top. Say you start with light oak, you think, oh, it's a bit wishy-washy, a bit light. You can go down, you can go medium, you can go to dark oak, three grades there. If you go dark oak to start with, uh-oh, you're going to get stuck. And the fact that I've taken the trouble to sand this wood down, I feel the grain might come out. You know, it's going to show up and it's going to come out in it, albeit it's only going to be in the garden. Let's get it on, see what it looks like. This one's probably going to take a couple of coats. Generally, put it on nice and thick, fill those holes out. Any nail holes that are left over, you can always push some wood filler in there if you want. And I've left these bolt, bolts sticking up, the heads, so that this varnish will seal around there. I think it might be better than actually recessing it and then filling it, filling it in with a wood stain. This will probably need a couple of coats at least, but you can see the difference in the colour. If I draw a line nice and straight there, uh, you can see, always finish your brush strokes going with the grain, whether you're painting or varnishing or staining. And when you, you know, w when you do finish, just go very lightly with a, barely the weight of the brush over it in one direction. There you go. It looks good to me. Well, there you can see the finished product, the varnish is dry, it's all ready to use. You can have it in a garden, conservatory, outbuilding, summer house, I've got it for the garden. Unfortunately, it's the middle of winter here in Britain, 
But us oldies, us British oldies, I can't speak for the younger generation, are made of sterner stuff. And if you think I've done all this work with that for nothing and not going to enjoy it, you are sadly mistaken. Hey, what do you mean this shirt's a bit fierce? There's nothing wrong with this shirt. And a bit of snow never hurts anybody. This saves me chilling the beers. Now let's just see if that table's any good for holding some beers. Oh yes, oh yes, this is what I call luxury. This is the height I wanted my drinks at. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. Cheers. Oh, hang on. One of the little items missing here. It may be five degrees out there. Ah, oh, but in here is four. Mm. Ah. Uh, somebody wake me up when it's May 